Yeah, this will do. Welcome to Tanning with Tyler, everyone. Uh, we're out here way, way back on my boss's property for a quick overnight car camp. Uh, I was out helping my boss build a deck today, so yeah, hence the swimming trunks. Hopped in this pool before, uh, before I headed on out here. It's just so hot today. Uh, so this is about as far back on this property I can get to by car, so should be a nice quiet night. We're going to have a fire, a couple drinks, and just relax. Uh, now, I know it's not much of a sight. It's a gravel pit, but uh, I know for a fact, a few years I've been coming back here, that there is a pack of wolves that frequents this area, and it's supposed to be a super clear night. I was hoping, you know, we might hear a little bit of wolf activity, also been a black bear prowling around these parts uh that would be really cool to get a sighting there there's a huge berry patch that field i drove through is just all berries um so we're going to take a walk around later and check for some bear scats see if we can find some tracks check out the area a little bit uh should be fun anyway we're gonna set the car up real quick well not real quick it's actually quite a process but uh yeah, this is this is a last minute trip, so this morning I just grabbed gear upon gear and just bombed it in the back of my car. So it's a bit of a disaster, so just bear with me as I try to sort it out. Uh, I'll take you on down to the car and we'll see what we're working with. Like I said, a disaster. I even got my tools from today. Just I think what we'll do is pull out all the gear, get the car bed set up. Uh, I did bring a tent with me that I've been testing out these past uh, few months. It's a uh, Wind Tigress Backwoods Bungalow. Um, I'm going to do a review on it soon. I was going to set it up tonight, but you know, I might as well just set up in the car and have a Super nice glamping trip. Yeah, I just grabbed anything and everything I thought I might need, which is a lot. Even brought uh, my Martin ukulele just in case I wanted to uh, strum by the fire tonight. Now, don't get me wrong, I. I like car camping. I don't love car camping. I'm more of a, you know, backwoods, hiking, canoe camping kind of guy. But uh, when the time calls for, you know, a quick, easy trip that you don't have to plan, no logistics, just throw your gear in and go, there's nothing easier than car camping. Great place to start if you've never been camping. mess. Alright guys, this is going to take me a while, so I'm just going to turn you off while I get this all set up. Uh, and I'll bring you back whenever things are starting to look a little more respectable. There you have it. A car bed. Uh, it's just a 4 by 8 sheet of plywood. All I've got is these 2 by 4 boxes that are the same height as my rear seat uh, just to catch the front of the uh, the plywood. The seats are moved all the way forward. Uh, this allows you to have two people uh, fully stretched out, which is, which is fine. Uh, now, I brought a cot that I wanted to try inside to see how it was. Now, I find even though this is almost flat, if I use a sleeping pad, like a blow up, like a climate static V, I slide all around all night and you end up not sleeping because you just wake up all over the place and you're super uncomfortable. So I brought my one tigress caught. I'm going to slap together right now and see if it fits in here. Now I'm going to be quite high, but if I'm just laying there in bed, it should be okay. 
We're going to give it a try tonight, for better or worse. Could be a terrible idea, but we're going to find out. Uh, I know a lot of people will build a raised platform with storage underneath. I feel like there just isn't enough headroom to do a permanent structure like that, in my opinion. Uh, I thought this is going to be great. Now, what I do have is a twin-sized 4-inch foam mattress that I had intended to use. Uh, it's still in my storage unit. Uh, but I was going to, you know, cut it around the wheel wells and cut it around the center console so it all kind of form fit everywhere. And that was my solution. It would have worked great. Um, as of yet, I've only been car camping solo, so I haven't really needed to do that. Um, so yeah, we're just going to try the cot. We'll see how it goes. Sorry guys. You know, after putting this together 15 plus times, you get uh, you get quite efficient at it. When I first bought this cot, it uh, it was super hard to click together, like just to the point where I wouldn't have recommended it for, you know, someone who was, you know, below average strength. Like it took so much force, but now that the fabric has softened up and stretched out, no problems whatsoever. You still have to put force on it, but not near not near as much as brand new. So yeah, let's see if this will even fit in here. You know, it's not as, not as high as I thought it would be. But uh, it definitely, that center console definitely is going to be an issue. I don't know if I can. Oh, you know, I could do it that way. I mean, I don't really care about scratching up my car because... You know, it's it's a 2016. It's had the the snot beat out of it quite a bit. Well, guys, I think that that's gonna work okay. I think it's gonna work just okay. Oh yeah, 
Yeah, nothing wrong with that. At night, I'm gonna have my cooler here and I'll uh, have my little Amazon Fire tablet and might watch a couple movies in bed. Yeah, that's gonna work just nicely. Definitely wouldn't work with two people in two cots, as you can see, but for me alone, I think this is gonna be a good solution. <laughs> Sorry about the show. Oh, my leg, my white legs. Tell you what, I'm gonna get a little more organized here and put on some pants because the bugs are starting to, to definitely uh, get hungry. So yeah, I'll bring you all back once I'm a little more organized. There you have it. That's my bed for the night. Uh, actually, I think it should be pretty cozy. Anyway, we're gonna set up chair and table and sit down and have a drink. You know, camping in the middle of a pit, I think it would have been smart enough to bring some shade, a tarp to set up to hide from the sun, because, ooh, it's 25 out just by weather network, so who knows how hot it is in this pit. It's got to be easily 30, easily 30. What a great saw this Boreal 21 is. 
I'm definitely due for a new blade. I've been running this, this two seasons now. It's cut a lot of wood. Now this is gonna be plenty of wood for all night for me using the solar stove campfire. You know, at least a few hours easily. Um, but yeah, what a great saw. I really recommend this thing. Jackpot. A fair sized moose here. Walking all the way through up to where my car was. Definitely a trail through the bush. And over there. You can see in here, there's definitely heavy travel in this area. What do you guys think? What do you think that would be from? That's fairly small. Definitely got some hairs in it and berries, so omnivore for sure. Cheers, everyone. You know, it's so amazing. You can come to areas like this and there is just bounty everywhere. You know, I went for a five minute walk around camp and just the amount of wild edibles, the amount of animal signs. You know, it, uh, it's really awesome. You could fill buckets five gallon buckets full of food from from this meadow alone you know you got raspberries there's uh blackberries even there's a little blueberry brush up there cattails goldenrod um burdock there's just so much now one thing i i try not to indulge in too much is wild edibles because if you're going to be doing that, you need hands-on training to know what you're eating, what's safe. There are a lot of plants that will kill you out here. You know, if you ingest them, they, they will kill you. And some of them look suspiciously like edible plants of other varieties. So, you know, hands-on training is important. It's not something I've done. You know, we did a little bit of wild edibles in... Uh, my environmental sciences school I went to, Sir Sanford in uh, Lindsay, Ontario. But just, just scrape the surface of, of what's out there. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely get look into getting training. Only a few plants that I will eat myself like berries because I know my berries uh, sumac you know cedar beech nuts those sort of things things that you can be concrete solid on oh, it's so quiet oh this is the life guys 
So next weekend, I'm, I'm away with my girlfriend. Uh, we're heading down to uh, Kowasi, and we rented a little cabin without power right by the river. We're going to take our, our dogs out and get away for a couple days. But the weekend after that, so two, two weeks from now, I'm going to do a two-night trip down the Black River in Muskoka. It is going to be awesome. Um, keep an eye out for that video. We are going to be camping at the base of two different waterfalls. Uh, one's called Pine Chutes, the other one's called Slope Chutes. And they are both gorgeous, let me tell you. I'm so excited. It's been a few years since I've been down the black, and every time it's different. You know, water levels, log jams, uh, erosion of the shore. It, it's, uh, it's almost like going down a new river every time you go down. You know, nobody goes down the black. I've been going down the black since, you know, I was seven years old with my dad. And now I've been soloing it all through my adult life. And not once have I ever encountered another canoeist or hiker out down the Black River. It's so quiet. It's so rugged. I'm super excited about it. But yeah, keep, uh, keep your eye out for it. It's going to be a great time. Uh, not sure what I'm going to do for a shelter yet. I'll definitely, not sure what tent I want to bring. But uh, we're going to be right on the water both nights. Really looking forward to it. So, it's time for some dinner. All I got is uh, some Mr. Noodles. And of course, I forgot any form of cutlery. So just gonna have to crush it up and drink it it's gonna make coffee in the morning quite tricky now it is starting to cloud over and I did just check the weather network um, so much for our clear night uh, it is supposed to start raining at some point tonight so it might just be a pack up and leave kind of morning no coffee, just get up and go, so maybe the no cutlery isn't going to be too much of an issue. stick will have to do. Woo! That's hot. So, coming up September 7th, my girlfriend and I are hiking the um, Superior Provincial Park Coastal Trail. Uh, we're going to do it in seven nights, eight days. Um, we're not going to go too crazy like uh, we did in our Algonquin hike last year. Um, a little less distance each day. Um, in the middle of the trip, we're going to stay two nights on one site just to recoup, recover, relax a bit. When you're just hauling butt through <laughs> these trails, you don't really take the time to stop and appreciate the beauty around you. 
So yeah, we're going to take our time, take it slow, enjoy the scenery. Um, really looking forward to it. Now, question for you all. So, what food do you guys bring on your hikes? Now, normally we stick with the freeze-dried, you know, ready-to-eat, dehydrated meals that you just add boiling water to. But they're getting pricey, especially since... Uh, my girlfriend and I are both vegans, so we are limited. Our selection is very limited. So any ideas or thoughts would be definitely welcome. Just got to figure some, some good snacks out, some high-energy foods for us to take that are lightweight, because the biggest thing about a hike of that, that length, you, know, you get into these seven-day hikes, these week-long hikes, is the food is the heaviest. You know, everyone, oh, you know, it gets lighter as, as you go on. It does get lighter, for sure, but your stamina and, and your well-being gets less with your use of food as well. Like, by day seven, you are spent. You know, you've hiked 100K over nasty terrain. You've fallen. You've scraped yourself up. You know, you, you don't really notice the difference of the weight. It Everything just feels heavy by the end of day seven, let me tell you. So yeah, thoughts, ideas, feel free. Leave them in the comments and uh, definitely open to suggestions. Well, it's getting to be about 9.30, and it is turning out to be a really nice night. Uh, fire is beautiful. Got my little mood lantern there, the fire maple orange glow lantern. Man, do I ever love that. Um, but the mosquitoes are bad. I'm starting to get chewed up pretty good, so I might uh, finish up my last drink here and crawl into the car early tonight. I uh, didn't bring any bug spray, of course. Uh, up just behind you guys there, there's that pit. And then all the surrounding area is actually just swampland. So the bugs do get pretty bad around here. Uh, I actually wasn't expecting them to be this bad in August, but uh, there you have it. You can never predict what the bugs are going to do to you. It's a shame. Because I really am enjoying this fire. Maybe they'll clear out in the next little while and I'll be alright. But I think I'm probably going to have to call it. Or else I'm going to be up all night just scratching away. I'm already, already getting me through my socks. and Well, you know how mosquitoes are. You just hear that silence though. It's just gorgeous. Love it. Now I have reviewed this in my channel. Check out the review. I've done a couple of videos on it and I absolutely love this fire pit. I mean, just look at it burn. It's, you know, 90% smokeless, you know, no sparks or embers. It is just, I'm so impressed with this little unit. Pricey. For sure, $170, but worth it. 100% worth it. I find I even, if my site has a designated fire pit, I'll just slap this right in the middle and use it because it just puts out the heat. Like my legs are on fire. Oh, love it. Camping sure has came a long way in the past. 10 years even, the, the gear they have out now is just insane. Well, cheers one last time, folks. Been a good night.
Hey guys, I am all cozied up in the car now. It's uh, definitely nice to be out of those bugs. Man, I'm covered, covered, covered in bites. This is actually super comfortable. I am gonna sleep like a stone tonight. Oh yeah. I got my uh, Snug Pack jungle blanket on me. Love this. I definitely prefer it over a sleeping bag. It's nice to not feel so restrained when you're sleeping. Yeah, I'm gonna throw on a movie. Probably not gonna make it through the movie. I'm definitely gonna fall asleep. And I might uh, snack on some chips. <laughs> I definitely would not recommend eating chips where you were sleeping when you were camping. But we are in a car and it doesn't get much safer than this for being out in the wilderness. So I'm going to enjoy some chips, watch a bit of movie, and fall asleep. Now, the weather tomorrow isn't supposed to be great, so I will probably just take apart this car bed and skedaddle as soon as I wake up. I won't even bother with coffee. It's going to be pouring rain. So I will say good night and goodbye to you guys now. Thanks for watching. Keep an eye out for my next video. It'll be that Black River trip I was talking about earlier. It's going to be a blast.